so again, so the, there's like two pre-productions. First one is choosing your team. Um, and then if, if you can't find like a team, uh, or you're like, you don't know people, um, just let me know and I can try to like do some kind of weird like team pairing thing. Um, does anyone need a refresher on what the final actually is? All right, all right, cool. Um, so the final is basically, um, you're gonna team up into groups of three or four. Um, and as a group, you're gonna select uh, some kind of space to make. Um, I say workshop in most of the things, but it could be like a dining room. Like I don't really care, just like a space. Um, so pick a space, pick a time period. Um, and then each person is responsible for making three objects. So one main object, like one hero object, one piece of furniture, and one decorative object. Um, and then once you guys have all made those, uh, you're gonna sort of share them among your group. Uh, so each of those objects should be, should make sense in the space that you're making um, and should be uh, in, a, in a similar style so they don't look out of place together. Um, the, only, the only real requirement for like the picking of the space, I don't really care what you do. Um, I'm waiting for someone to find something that challenges that statement. But um, I don't really care what you do. The only caveat is it can't be like a future thing. Uh, it does need to be something where you can actually find like reference images for whatever kind of space that you're looking for. Um, so again, so you're gonna, each person's gonna model three objects um, and then you're gonna share them among the group. Um, and then each person as an individual is going to basically set up their own layout and rendition of the space itself. So like, if you're doing like a Victorian toy workshop or something like that, um, each person's gonna do their own layout for the space, pick like their own backstory for the space, um, and position the objects differently, texture the scene themselves, et cetera. Um, the whole point of having multiple people work together as a team, um, since you're in responsible for making a bunch of objects in a whole environment, um, being able to start with at least nine objects in your scene is gonna help that environment feel fuller and save everyone a little bit of work while also uh, allowing people to sort of get used to working in teams in like a relatively, uh, I guess, low stakes. Like if someone doesn't submit their stuff, you're out three objects that's not like you can't finish the project kind of thing. Um, yeah, so any questions on that? Cool, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the final. Um, so yeah, so the assignments uh, for this week, um, once you've chosen your group, um, as a group, you're going to pick the space you're working in uh, and the time period for said place. Again, only real caveat is like no future stuff. Um, and then you're gonna find five images that represent like the time period and sort of style of the pieces that will be present in your space. Um, so this could be, if you did like Victorian toy shop thing, um, you could find maybe some examples of like, if you happen to find Victorian toy shops, but like Victorian storefronts, um, or like Victorian tools, like that kind of thing. Just like stuff that has like the general sort of feel and is reflected of like the time period, the space, that kind of thing. Basically just collect a few reference images that are gonna help ground everyone. Um, since you're sharing objects, it does make sense that like the objects all look similar enough where it doesn't look like they're all like crazy out of place. Um, so yeah, collect those images. Um, and they're only, they're not like, necessarily specific to the, the place itself, only like the time period, I guess. Um, but yeah, mostly just collect reference images to like ground each other, ground the work that you guys do to the other people's stuff. Any questions on that part? All right, yep. So five um, as a group, you find at least five or more images as a group. Um, and if you guys, if you guys aren't like, I realize like not everyone is gonna be in a group with like people to hang out with all the time. Um, if you guys wanna sort of do something maybe where you like collect a few images like on a Google Drive or something and then just sort of as like, people are like, oh, like I like these images and sort of like sort through them, that might be a way to sort of compensate for that. Um, but yeah, so five plus images as a group. Um, yeah. Um, and then you're also gonna make uh, a list of the, the hero objects, furniture stuff and decorative objects that each person is responsible for. Um, and it doesn't, I don't hate the idea of people like switching objects or whatever. Um, I might, um, this is also like a good, so for your hero objects, it should be, think of something like of comparable complexity to what you did for CGI one. Um, it should be something like 
complex enough to be a good showpiece object. Um, the yeah, so basically just like make a list of all the stuff each person's making. Um, goal behind this is basically you don't want to accidentally have the same like two people make the exact same chair because um, that is just gonna be a kind of like awkward to display in the scene having like two slightly different versions of the same chair, um, but also. Especially, it would be like really bad if people duplicated hero objects, because then you just have like multiple versions of the same object. Um, so it's mostly just to get around that. Um, yeah. Any questions on that? All right. Um, so all that stuff I just talked about is stuff that you guys do in a group. Um, and as individuals, you're going to do the following stuff, uh, which is a lot of just sort of creating backstory for your um, for your scene. Um, and this does not does not by any means need to be like some crazy like seven paragraph thing. So like brief description is fine. So again, if you're doing like Victorian toy shop, um, you might just say it's a it's a small cramped workspace uh, that hasn't been used for a while and everything is kind of like falling apart and the viewer should feel kind of like lonely and uncomfortable looking at the space or something like that. That's all I need. Doesn't need to be crazy fancy. Um, and then, so a lot of these questions are like, who does the workshop belong to and like, what is that person's life? Um, so, and it, it, it kind of helps you give like a little bit of direction for the scene. So what I was thinking about earlier is like who it belongs to, toy maker. Um, how old is that toy maker? Um, and that can, I guess get a little bit into like if you're, if it's like a really, really old person who's like making these toys, they might organize the space differently from someone who's young and spry. So like maybe they won't be able to bend down as far, so they won't have a lot of like stuff stored on lower shelves. They'll have everything like up higher where they can reach it with their hands. Um, same thing like if the person happens to be like in a wheelchair or something, they probably aren't going to like put everything up on like ladders where they'd have to get to it. Um, or if it's like a kid, again, that's going to be like a different sort of space. It's probably going to be like way messier than anything um, like an adult would have. Um, so that kind of thing, again, just mostly just helping you um, think of backstory for the space itself um, through thinking about the people who are using it. Um, age of the space is it like a building that's falling down with like a bunch of wallpaper on the walls trying to like make it look like it's not falling down, that kind of thing. Um, and then again, just like the list of objects that you and your team will be creating. Um, with, uh, if you could just like let me know who's creating each individual object, that would also be lovely. Um, so any questions on that part? All right. Um, again, doesn't need to be super fancy. If you want to make notes for yourself about like age of person and like how that affects the scene, you're welcome to like make notes about that. Um, it's not a requirement. Um, and then the other thing that I want is, and this again doesn't need to be super fancy. Um, just do like a few concept sketches about. Um, like the layout and final look of the scene. Um, so like, again, rough thing of layout, like kind of maybe rough in like the camera angles you were hoping to capture. Um, and then for stuff like is the space used or heavily brand new, how will you show that? If you want to just like, if it's like an old building and you want to just like draw a crack on the wall and put an arrow saying like cracks on wall from water damage, like totally fine. <laughs> Again, doesn't need to be crazy, crazy fancy unless it helps you to make it crazy, crazy fancy. Um, and then if you have any like reference photography that's useful for that. Um, so if you happen to find like a really nice example of like water damaged walls and you wanted to like throw that in your image, you could do that. Um, the only real requirements for this um, is that the space does need to have at least one window and one door uh, because for the final renders, you're gonna be doing a a daytime and a nighttime lighting of the, the scene. Uh, and if you have no window and you're just sort of in an underground box, it makes that kind of difficult. Um, again, this doesn't need to be like crazy fancy. If you do choose to hand draw stuff, um, just make sure that your pictures are like decent and like high res and not hideous and blurry and unreadable. Um, so yeah. Any questions on the, the concept art stuff? Yes. Yeah, that's just this is like a requirement of the space itself. Um, there's also there's also like a soft require. 
I'll call it a soft requirement. It's like the space has to be like a 12 by 12 box or like fit within a 12 by 12 area or something like that. Um, I'm not gonna like hold people to that. Um, I guess should be making stuff to scale for your final. Um, but I'm not gonna like hold people to the 12 by 12 thing. Um, that's mostly just like, I would highly recommend against doing like a giant ballroom or something like that, or like a giant, like enormous space. We're gonna have to do like six times the amount of work to populate it. Uh, it's a lot easier to make a tiny box feel cluttered than it is to make a large box feel cluttered. Um, but again, soft requirement, the only thing is that it doesn't need to have a window and a door. Um, any other questions? All right. Um, and then last thing uh, is just collect some reference imagery, um, especially of the models that you're actually going to be making. Um, just models you're making as an individual, you don't need to like collect reference for your teammates. Um, so if you're doing like a particular chair or whatever, like find pictures of that chair. Um, and then just like find other references for like textures and stuff that you're gonna be using for stuff. So if there's like cloth textures you like or wood textures, grab some references of that. Um, some random stuff for like mood and lighting. If there's like a particular feel you're trying to capture, um, grab some stuff with that. Honestly, it's gonna sound weird, but if there's like a particular if there's like a painting someone did that you like or something or like an animated movie with like lighting reference like fair game as far as i'm concerned for for lighting reference images um and this again should be personalized to uh, your interpretation of the space um and and the moment you are capturing um so each each, each person could choose to like light the scene completely differently um you can do like really happy daylight scene or like gray rainy daylight scene where everything is like foggy and awful looking um everything should just sort of like at least fall within the um the style of like the the period that you're working in um and if you could just organize this like i don't need like crazy like eight bajillion folders but just like you know separate like the texture and the lighting and the model references that would be amazing um any que questions on the reference pictures um, in terms of, yep. Is it really hard to make your own kind of textures or lighting stuff for a scene, or is it just the online version for that particular chair? Oh, oh, like if you don't have access to like a fancy Victorian chair, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's totally fine. Okay. Um, that's just like one of those instances where like collect as much reference as you can, and then you might need to like draw in some of your own orthographics to like compensate for not having them. Um, but yeah, like honestly, that's probably how, unless you're like at a fancy studio who can afford to like bring in tigers for your reference, you're probably gonna have to look for online stuff in, in the course of your lives. So it's totally fine. Um, that was a weird, that was a weird example I just gave. Um, in terms of what to actually submit, um, this is gonna sound really weird, um, but I would like each person to just submit like a duplicated file of the, the group work stuff that was done. Um, it makes it, way easier if I don't need to like sort through 800 groups and be like, oh, who submitted this? Yeah, that line in here is just very annoying. Um, but um, yeah, so each person should submit all of the stuff for the group work, um, as long as, as well as their individual work. Um, and just organize, if you just like organize it loosely in the sort of bullet point uh, setup that I have, um, that would be lovely. Um, so yeah, formats and stuff are all listed here. Um, and just like zip zip a file with all of this stuff in it. Um, I, I want a single zip file for the assignment that I can just open and have scroll gloriously before me. Um, so any questions on this assignment? All right. Um, any questions on any of the other stuff that we went over? Anything for like the upcoming assignment stuff like that? All right. Um, I do before I before I let you guys go. I have like one really quick point of bureaucracy. Um, so. Week five is a little bit of like a sort of random free week uh, where there's like not necessarily anything specified for me to show you guys. Uh, so my plan was to just do a bit of like a random hodgepodge of like things that might be interesting and or useful, like um, go over some like subsurface scattering, uh, maybe do some really quick like end cloth simulations if any of you guys wanna like throw a tablecloth in your final scene. Um, just do like random stuff like that. Um, so I'll be sending out a survey at some point in the next week. Um, just asking like, 
random stuff, um, but also like, is there anything that you would be interested in going over for that uh, week five class? Um, so if there is anything, um, just let me know. Otherwise, I'll probably just like come up with a really random assortment of random things and just sort of show you guys stuff. Um, but yeah, so look out for that. Apart from that, it's pretty much it. So if you want to run away, you can run away now. Yes.